happen if I was dropped into deep space right now? Trying to survive in deep space isn't like trying to survive without your five a day. It's not something you can live without, something you can forget about. It's so absurd. The idea of deep space being unlivable, that even philosophers such as Descartes in the 16th century denied its existence. It was too much for even the I think therefore I am man to cope with. You'll probably lose consciousness in 10 to 15 seconds due to lack of oxygen. This wouldn't just happen in space. It can also happen on Everest if you don't take any O2 with you, except it will take a little longer. It's all very disheartening to those who find they need oxygen every day, which is the majority of us. Because there is no air pressure in space, your blood and other liquids inside you would boil. This would take about a minute. Your tissues would expand as a result. You would be faced with radiation and solar wind. You'll be faced with the extreme cold. An icebox in December has nothing on this. The sun produces heat to make space about 120 degrees Celsius. If you're in a shady part of space, it could be more like minus 100 Celsius. There doesn't seem to be many parts of space which are our comfortable living room temperature. If you're really unlucky, you may be hit with the small parts of rock or space junk. This may surprise you because many people believe space to be, well, empty space. You'll probably be subject to ebulism, which is when bubbles form in the blood. It could be that you would die from a heart attack, as dogs have done in the 60s unethical experiments. They also suffered from a frequency of urination and over-vomiting. We have to disillusion you with the Hollywood belief that your organs will explode. Okay, so your spleen or appendix may not have been designed without a space in mind, but that's going a bit too far. You may suffer great swelling in the eyes and in the lungs. You'll probably die in less than a minute, not even enough time to write a simple will, let alone a complicated one. Fortunately, we have enough oxygen on Earth, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere soon. But what if, or when, we colonise other planets?